Hi, my name is Steve DeJong. I'm the CEO of Verify Technology. Uh, today, I'm having a conversation with Ryan Melsert, the CEO of American Battery Technology. Ryan, great to reconnect. Hi, Steve. Great to speak with you again. Um, exciting times. Let's um, let's jump into it. For last time we spoke, a lot has changed. So, but before we jump into everything that's changed, everything that's that, that's new with the project. Um, if I can hand it over to you, why don't you give us a, a quick overview on the project and then we'll spend a little bit more time talking about what the, the latest. Yes, of course. So just as a refresher, you know, we here at American Battery Technology Company have our, our two technologies that we're commercializing. We've developed a technology for the recycling of lithium ion batteries. We currently have our first commercial scale facility operating just outside of Reno, Nevada here. But today we're mostly focusing on a different technology which is how we are using a lithium bearing claystone down here in central Nevada near Tonopah to actually extract the lithium from that claystone and convert it all the way into a battery grade lithium hydroxide product. So we developed this process about two years ago. We've built it out at the bench scale. We now have a, a pilot plant that can process multiple tons per day of material installed in the Reno area and we're moving forward with the commercial scale refiner design right of the project here. Exciting times. And um, so before we jump into the pilot plant and everything else there, why don't, why don't we spend a little bit of time talking about the drilling and um, any updates to the resource side of it? Definitely. So our property here near Tonopah, this shows our, our property boundary. So we have just over 10,000 acres of land. These red areas are the locations that we sampled in our first two drill programs. Over the past summer, we've completed a third drill program shown here with these green plots. So specifically in the southern portion of our property, where we've seen some of the higher grades and the more accessible material. So the first two programs, again, went to moderate depth, you know, some down to 500 feet, some down to 750. In this third program, we went down close to 1500 feet in depth really because in the first two programs, we continue to see high lithium concentrations, even at the very bottom of those drill programs. So both increase in the density with the infill drilling and going to much greater depths has really let us map out this resource to much greater depths. So importantly, as we look at some of the concentrations here in the green plots, going to, to much greater depths, this is the pole right here. We went down to almost 1500 feet so different grades showed in the color coding again. So we're seeing that even at the very bottom locations, we still have quite a bit of the area that's greater than, than 500 and even more so greater than 300 parts per million. This is a surface level resource. So we're seeing high lithium concentrations within about 30 feet from the surface. So it makes it very low cost to access this material, much more of a surface excavation than any type of blasting or drilling needed. And we do see the greater than a thousand ppm concentrations much more near the surface. Because of this infill drilling, we really have been able to increase the classification of this project. The report we put out last year had the entire resource at the inferred level. Because of this infill drilling, we've really been able to move up more into the indicated and measured resources. So we still have a fair amount of the property that is at the inferred category. This really is outside of the more recent program we've done during the thrill drill area. But we've now been able to add in this indicated section here as well, showing a large portion of this, especially at depth, is now in the indicated classification, and then quite a bit in the measured as well, showing the higher classification and confidence level of material. So as we go back here towards our 3D layout, showing our pit design on this property, with the highway and electrical infrastructure running about midway through here. So on a volume basis, just over half of this resource has now moved from the inferred up to the measured indicated, really giving much more classification and, and confidence level here. And, and as you as you <clears throat> excuse me, as you increase that confidence level and drill it more, um, are you seeing anything uh, within the grade as well? Yeah, so we're seeing significant increases in the grade as we move into the measured area. That's really two reasons. One is that we're intentionally choosing 
the infill drilling basin where we've seen those higher classifications and concentrations to begin with. And also in our first program, we really use reverse circulation based drilling, which is a, a quick process to move forward. But in this latest third program, we've used a, a core drilling technology, which tend to have more accurate drill results and has shown a, a fairly sizable increase in the grade as we look forward here. It's, it's funny because inferred is, you always get discounted for inferred resources because it's a lower confidence level because it's not drilled off nearly as much. It's nice to see that as you as you move up confidence level in your resource, you're not losing grade at the same time. And do you, do you anticipate uh, core drilling going forward? Yes, the core drilling is quite a bit more accurate, so we do plan on that going forward. So as we continue to drill out other areas, both infill and step out drilling, you know, we're optimistic about seeing increased grades there as well. And one, one thing that really jumps out at me, that is the black line that we're looking at here that comes right across the property, that is the highway. It is, it's actually both a highway and there's a, a high voltage transmission line directly there. So we have a 115,000 volt line directly running through our property. There's substations in both directions, about four miles northwest and southeast of us. So great access to the site and a large amount of electrical infrastructure already installed on this property. So near infrastructure can mean different things to different projects. I guess this is about as, as good as it gets in that sense. Yes, directly on the property. The town of Tonopah is about four miles southeast. So having access to other types of infrastructure, a labor force, you know, the town there is very familiar with mining operations, large amounts of historic gold and silver mining in the area. So we, we have our own office right in Tonopah where we have our full-time employees and we're excited to keep working with the community to move this project forward. Okay, so we've got an updated resource. Um, that not only the, or sorry, that was not the only update the company did. Um, initial assessment came out in, in December. Maybe a high level view on that. Yes, the initial assessment, you know, under the US SEC SK1300 standards, it's similar to a PEA under Canadian standards really came out and showed a lot of the scale up of how we will build a commercial scale refinery directly on our property and how to develop the mine asset itself. So many details in that project where we detail out this increase in classification, but the, the big area as well is that we've been performing our own bench scale trials over the past two years, taking material directly from our property here, processing it through our development center and actually making battery grade lithium hydroxide that we're able to quantify and show that it meets the specifications that are needed for the battery grade spec. And we've actually had the product verified by customers as well. And the big takeaway from the IA really is this type of sedimentary resource is still relatively new. There aren't any commercial scale facilities that can recover lithium from this type of resource to date. So demonstrate we can do it at bench scale is very important and show we can do it economically. So in the IA report, we've shown that we can produce a battery grade lithium hydroxide at a production cost of just over $4,600 per ton. So it makes it a very competitive cost that's backed up by our bench scale data. And the next step, like we mentioned, as part of one of the DOE grants we won about two years ago, is we've now built out a multi-ton per day integrated pilot plant where we're taking hundreds of tons of material from the property and going all the way from processing at the front of our plant, going through our extraction, our purification, and our conversion steps, and actually making a battery grade lithium hydroxide out the back end of this plant. So we'll use that pilot plant data to further verify those production costs and put that in future reports. So we're on pace right now to move this up to a pre-feasibility study towards the end of this year. And just some shots here of the pilot plant. So as it was under construction a few months ago, really different sections of the plant running. Another view here when it was partially completed. And then now we have this complete pilot plant that we have integrated in our facility near Reno. And we're going through commissioning ramp up right now. So over the coming weeks, we'll actually have large scale batches of lithium hydroxide. And we have many potential customers 
you know, cathode refiners, battery manufacturers, automotive OEMs, who have been touring this facility to really see how it operates and are anxious to see some of the, the large batches of product that we've been making from this plant, which we'll be sending to them for validation and purification tests. I think it's such an important step that I, that probably gets looked over. So, um, not I shouldn't say looked over, but maybe the, the investment community isn't always aware of. It's very different than gold, where the end product is gold, and you just sell it into the gold market. Or what you're creating is every every project is different, creates different types of, of lithium products as well. So to be to be at this step sounds like it's a it's a very very big um, box that you're you're ticking in that you're going from PA to PFS, but you're not doing it with a conceptual flow sheet on this is potentially how it might be processed. We hope it works and we hope there's buyers at the end to be going into that PFS and eventually feasibility process, knowing who your buyers are and the end product that you're actually creating or producing and having actually produced it, not just on in a, in a spreadsheet somewhere. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it sounds like it's a very, very big de-risking moment for the project. It is, and not just not in a spreadsheet, but also not just at bench scale. So that was an important step early on, but now processing multiple tons per day, this is a very big de-risker. And as we discussed last time, you know, last year we did win another Department of Energy grant to support the construction of a commercial scale lithium hydroxide refinery directly on our property. So as we prove this out at the bench scale and now at the pilot scale, we're going through commercial scale design right now um, of this much larger scale facility. So we'll be building a, a 30,000 ton per year lithium hydroxide refinery directly on top of our resource, really based off of the process that's being confirmed with this pilot plant you see here. And, and is most interest, like I'm sure you can only say so much, most interest you're seeing from potential buyers of the product domestic for the most part? We work mostly with domestic facilities. Again, through the Inflation Reduction Act, there are large incentives to selling domestically. The demand in the U.S. is, is dramatic. You know, there are over two dozen battery factories under construction right now in the U.S., each one about the size of the first Tesla Gigafactory near Reno. So very large amounts of demand coming online. Many of those plants make high energy density battery cells. And for those types of cells, they really can only use lithium in the hydroxide form as a feed. The other handful of lithium plants in the U.S. mostly make a lithium carbonate product, which really isn't high enough quality to be used in those processes. So very few facilities in the U.S. can make this lithium hydroxide, and there are dozens of plants that require it. So a very large supply and demand imbalance within the U.S. Yeah, fascinating. Um, any any special innovative technologies or methodologies util, utilized in this project through the pilot plants or elsewhere? Yes, quite a few. Again, like I mentioned, there, there really isn't any large scale facility that can produce lithium from a claystone material. But the, the baseline technology usually involves using very large amounts of acid to dissolve the full claystone material itself then a relatively expensive and complicated purification train to isolate the lithium. And then because there are so many contaminants, it's usually a reaction into a lithium carbonate product. So we do all three of those things differently. We've intentionally designed a process where we don't need to dissolve the claystone itself, where we can recover the lithium from the claystone host structure while leaving the claystone in solid form. This is a dramatic reduction in acid consumption which is usually the largest cost to making lithium from a claystone material. It also makes the purification of the product much simpler and then allows us to go directly into a hydroxide product and not have to go through a carbonate intermediate. So those three steps are really why we're able to make this at such a low production cost, why it's different from what's out there today, and you know why we have so much interest from prospective customers. Interesting. Um, and Ryan, maybe just flick it, we'll, we'll cut this part out, but if you can just flick it back to just the two of us. So Ryan, how does, how does this update and, and how things are moving along with your project? How does that, um, align with the current market demand? 
where the lithium market stands today. So right now, like I mentioned, there are close to two dozen battery plants under construction right now. They're scheduled to really be completed in 2025, going through commissioning mostly in 2026. Some of the largest cathode plants in the world have been announced in the US. They'll be coming online in 2026 and 27. And right now, for the commercial scale refinery we're working on, we're looking at commissioning in the end of 26 and early 27. So the production of this plant is very well aligned with a lot of the demand centers coming online. So there are very few projects and refineries moving forward in the US, while there are many of these gigafactories still under construction. So we're very excited that our production is well aligned with the timing of the demand centers coming online as well. Interesting. And uh, we talked about PFS, FS, pilot plant coming online. In the short term, what uh, what kind of investors expect to see? Well, I think the next step is really we'll be delivering product from this pilot plant to prospective customers. These are much larger batches than you would make in a bench scale system. These will be used for purity checks, but even more than that, these can actually be made into large batches of high energy density active cathode material. There's enough to actually be made into full size battery cells. And then those cells can be tested to ensure their performance. And those are really the last few steps that are needed to go through the final diligence steps and qualification steps to start selling this product from our commercial scale refinery. And many prospective customers have offered to move forward essentially with long-term offtake agreements once they see some of the product out of this pilot plant to really start locking down you know, the, the product and where we'll be selling this from the commercial scale plant over the next few years. Okay, great. Um, well, I appreciate you taking the time today. Any, any final thoughts? Yeah, just that we're excited to be systematically moving this project forward. So last year was an inferred resource, now moving to measured indicated. We'll be continuing to develop this project out, you know, moving towards the PFS towards the end of this year and parallel with bringing this pilot plant online and making large scale batches of product delivered to customers. And then through this latest DOE grant we've won, you know, we're already going forward with our, our construction design for the commercial scale refinery. So it's a lot of things happening at once, but there is a, a structure to it about how we're choosing to go through each of these steps. So we're excited to show the progress here today, and we look forward to showing more progress as we go forward. Great. Ryan, thanks for the update. You're definitely not slowing down. It's nice to be busy. Um, lots on the go. I uh, appreciate you taking the time today. Um, and then uh, for anyone who wants more information about the company, I'm sure we can, uh, or they can go to your website, uh, get information, investor deck, um, some interac interactive content and so on. But thanks again, Ryan. It's great to connect. Definitely great to speak with you again.